Ready? Everyone ready to go? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michael was born in Toowoomba, Queensland, and he moved to Adelaide about 10 years ago to pursue, as you've heard from his family, his IT career here in Adelaide. At the time of his disappearance, Michael was 32, and he was reported missing to police on the 24th of April this year. And on the 20th of May, after um, an investigation by Eastern District detectives, the investigation was handed over to Major Crime Investigation Branch and declared as a major crime. The reason being is that we strongly suspect, in fact, we believe that Michael has been murdered uh, shortly after his uh, last sighting in Adelaide. We know that Michael was involved in the illicit drug trade here in Adelaide. We also know that he um, had dabbled over the years in fraud activities, which, as you've heard from his family, led to him spending some time in prison. Um, that said, Michael was a good person at heart. He uh, cared for other people. He looked out for other people, and he always tried to do the right thing by people. Not knowing what has happened to your loved one is a terrible thing, and for a family to go through that is terrible. As you can see, Michael's family are good people. His mum has flown the whole way from the other side of the world to be here today. His dad, who's a leading paramedic in New South Wales, has come from New South Wales with his son to speak to the media and speak to the public to um, get information in relation to Michael's disappearance. They simply don't deserve this. Michael didn't deserve what happened to him, and we want to find answers. By way of timeline, I want to tell you that on the 4th of February, um, we know that Michael was in the casino precinct um, on North Terrace. At 80, sorry, at 8.10 p.m., he was spoken to at the On The Run convenience store on North Terrace, which is across from the railway station, by police. At that time, he was displaying signs of paranoia and anxiety. And as a result of that, police advised that he should go to the Royal Adelaide Hospital, which he did with um, South Australian Ambulance. On Tuesday the 5th at 2.15pm in the afternoon, he was released from the Royal Adelaide Hospital and we know that he was seen walking by staff towards the city again. At about 4.26pm on the 5th, which was the Tuesday, we know that he made a cash withdrawal from an ATM on Bank Street, just off North Terrace, and that at that point he then returned to the casino for a while. Later that evening, we know that he caught a train to Elizabeth and he stayed overnight with a friend at Elizabeth Downs. On Wednesday the 6th, Michael returned to Adelaide, and again he was in the casino precinct area. Later that day, we know that Michael left the city, and he hasn't been seen since. Investigators know that during those two days, sorry, during those three days that Michael had contact via telephone with a number of friends, those people we have spoken to. Our inquiries make it very clear to us that lots of people know what has happened to Michael and those people need to come forward sooner rather than later because we will be coming to knock your door and we will be coming to ask you what happened to Michael. His family don't deserve this. Michael doesn't deserve this. People need to come forward and do the right thing. I'll take some questions. Do you have any suspects? We have a number of persons of interest to our inquiry um, and we're working our way through those. I don't want to go into the details of the investigation, but there are certain things that have come out in the inquiry that suggest that that is the case. Um, and that coupled with the fact that there's no sign of life from Michael, we've got no bank transactions, we've got no te telecommunications, um, we've no, no sightings, he just hasn't been seen, he's just basically gone off the grid completely. So yeah. all that indicates that, 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 that he's met with foul play. So yes. what makes you think he hasn't chosen to go off the grid and he doesn't want to be found? Is the, those facts plus our investigations strongly suggest to us that he's been murdered. Have you been able to establish the identity of the person that Michael's mother said that interrupted the phone call on the last night that she spoke to him? Not at this stage. There are lots of people plus knowing what happened to Michael. Does that indicate that several people were involved in his murder? Or you believe several people were involved? Well, we believe there's a number of people involved in the last few hours of Michael's life that would have known what has happened to him. We also know that those people will have spoken to other people, so albeit those people may not have uh, witnessed firsthand what has happened to Michael, there's lots of people that do know what's happened to him and they need to speak to police. Are you thinking it's a drug deal going on? Uh, we don't know what the motive is. That's We're keeping a very open mind on what the motive was. As I say to him, Michael had a 
drug problem. He had a problem with the, his uh, dabbling in fraud activities. But at heart, he was a good person. So it's hard for us to fathom out why someone chose to end his life. Were any of those last phone contacts of a, of a threatening nature? Had someone threatened to harm him? No. I mean, he's an IT Zeus. Could he just not have you know, created a new identity if he had wanted to? What makes you think it's not just an open person to say? Look, as much as we would like that to be the scenario, we don't think it is. Is there any suggestion there's a link between his time in prison and his um, fraud charges and the disappearance? No. Final questions for you. In particular, who are you, you know, you said that you are coming and kind of looking for people. What in particular um, you know, what's been your email address for the group? Is it those who did interact with you in the last few days? Well, clearly we're conducting a murder inquiry. Um, the community expectation is that people will assist with that murder inquiry. If you obstruct us or hinder us, there's obviously offences that people commit there and we would deal with that appropriately. How much progress have you made since our last um, conference in June? We've made um, significant pro progress. Um, we just don't want to go into the detail of that today. Did anyone involved miss the people that you said you administered? Were they from a particular area of Adelaide? Um, Michael, um, in the last few months of his life, was quite transient. He lived at different places. He, we do know that he stayed at Taparoo for a while. We know he stayed at um, Port Adelaide for a while. We know he stayed in the city in the southern suburbs. So that transient nature of the last few months of his life makes it quite difficult. It also means that he connects with quite a few people around the city. So it makes it difficult. Would you say that an arrest is imminent? Uh, I wouldn't go as far as that at this stage. Okay, thanks, Bill. Can, we, um, can I please ask you about the extradition Yeah, so as you'd know from the press release, we're still seeking two people in relation to the uh, murder inquiry. Um, in relation to the extradition, that has been approved in Queensland today, and we expect that um, Mr Pride will appear in court tomorrow morning. And uh, when do you expect to make those last two arrests? Do you feel like you're close? Has um, there been a suspect? I think as Superintendent Bray previously said, we've got quite a long way to go with some of the work that needs to be done. So. Um, we're making progress, but I can't give you a timeline on that.